Hey everybody, welcome to our first video in probably a series of uh, techniques to help you relief, re, uh, release grief. So before we jump in, I really wanted to spend a few minutes talking about grief so that you really have your right intentions in doing this, okay? Um, grief is usually described by um, unprocessed, right, loss. And when we grieve, that is the process of experiencing what we have lost, what we are losing. We can also grieve for future anticipation of loss. And I don't know if a lot of people are aware of that, that they could honestly be in a, a low key state of anticipation of grief and grief is something that usually we bury with everything inside of us. Like it is the one thing that, that if we're gonna hide something, right, it's going to be grief. And the reason why is as, as you guys start to kind of study frequencies, brain waves, hormones, the idea of loss is death. And you're, you're dealing with a body that literally can't see outside of you. So it does not know what you know. It does not see what you see. It is literally a operator, an operational system that is on its own timeline and rhythm, but it's here to interact with you. And so as it is doing its own thing, right? And it, if left alone, your body will play off of the life cycle of your genetics. It will play off of the life cycle of your lineage. It will also play off the light cycle of your environment, which means if, if no one's home to operate this vehicle and, and you know choose a different course, then your body will play out the programs that are basically, that were hardwired in, okay? And this is where a lot of times it feels like we're not creating a reality. It feels like we're kind of like, reality is being you know presented to us and then we get to choose what shows up. And this is never ever why you came here. <laughs> you did not come from spirit into you know a tight little body to be like, oh, well, I guess I have to, you know, I guess I'm allowed to do this or, I guess I'm only allowed to do this. this. This is why, you know, it's so heartbreaking to even and be here and witness some of the things that you see because it, it goes against the grain of everything your heart is telling you ever since you were a little kid. The problem is, is that, you know, the, the perfection of the human body, although its own consciousness and its own organism was designed to work, like I said, in tandem, in partnership with you, which is the, the observer, the focus, the, the awareness, you know, it's when you're watching yourself throw a tantrum, it's when you're like, why do I act like that? You know, it's, it's the you that is watching you, okay? And that doesn't usually happen until we get a little older, because again, you know, we're young and we, we live in that space, but then as we get taught away from our ourselves, um, we start to see everything as if, you know, everything is us and everything is, is, it's not like necessarily a reflection or a projection. It's really just like, it's a reactive state. So when we start to kind of like go on that self-realization journey, uh, we start to really want to unpack like, okay, you know, why does it feel like if I'm supposed to be, you know, the driver of this body, that this body is driving me, you know, why is it that, if I'm supposed to create my reality, then people keep treating me how I don't want to be treated. If I'm supposed to be creating my own reality, you know, why do I feel so lost and confused? Why do I feel so untrusting? Why can I not trust myself? And these are the questions I get all the time. And these are the questions that I had to ask myself, you know, because again, I have studied every religion. I have studied every science. I have studied, you know, every psychology um, and everything in the middle, you know, it's like, my parents raised me in a weird cult when we were growing up and it was like, um, you know, it was, it was all karma. So, you know, you weren't allowed to get hurt. So again, I have been studying and researching this my entire life. And I was always that, why, 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 why? Probably so annoying, but it was, it was a constant. I, I just kept asking why. And finally, you know, when you ask it's given eventually, I kind of put the pieces together in this last, this last hour 
you know, of, of this work that was coming together. And we have to understand that the only real loss and the only real grief that we are ever carrying in our bodies is the loss of ourselves. Okay. Yes. It, it just, it hurts when you lose grandma. It hurts when you lose your partner. If you've lost a child, that you can't come back from that. I, I understand. But this original disconnection that we have with our bodies, that is kind of a no choice type of situation. You know, it's like, we gotta fall in line. We've gotta, you know, do what the pack leader does, or we've gotta, you know, follow what the star's needs are, whether that be the, you know, high needs child or the, brother that was born after you or you know your mother's addiction that everybody catered to who knows it does it it's really the storyline doesn't matter the root of grief is the loss of you okay because who you were when you were a child is still in there okay and even though your dreams and your hopes and things like that might have changed the you that you came here to to be abundantly um, gifted with and share is still there. And so it's grieving, but it's also this feeling of trapped and stuck and blocked and alone and rejected and abandoned. So all of that is also with this grief of loss, right? And the more we were forced to separate from ourselves, the bigger this separation became, which means that you're gonna have a bigger separation going on in the body. You're also gonna have a bigger separation projected outside of you, which means that if I was forced away from, you know, most of my divine masculine energy, then I am going to always lose relationships or I'll always be chosen second, or I will always, you know, not get the person that I want. There will be this like chronic abandonment and rejection in, in the ideas of my partnership. Because again, this is your first partnership. Okay. And it also will be created inside of my body to show me that there is a disconnect. And this could be in chronic headaches, gut issues. You're gonna notice that some part of you is not working or not working with you or not working for you, okay? And when we have that, because our body is the biography of this and our reality is the biography of this, then we have to kind of look at these two realities and say, okay, what am I really grieving here? And, and what, what do I want to unpack that I have been carrying around a lot? And what do I want to, what do I want to create? What is the intention here? Because the more you release grief in your body, the more your intuition is going to come online. And the more your intuition comes online, the more stuff you're just going to know in the moment, because really what, you know, intuition is the true definition of intuition is trust. And you really have been taught away from trusting yourself. And you were told that you're not safe to trust your choices, that you're gonna trust someone else's choices, that you're not safe to do what you wanna do because it's not good for you or whatever, someone else is gonna decide for you. So your original root grief loss is loss of self, right? And when we lose this connection with ourselves, and trust me, you may not remember this in childhood, but you fought tooth and nail for everything inside of you to not give it up. It wasn't like you were like, okay, here you go. You fought for this. You know, we, we call it, the, you know, the terrible twos, or I think four was a lot more difficult with little ones, but it was like, you could feel their, their way to adapt that you could find their way. They were like, I'm not giving this up. Like I will lie, I will manipulate, I will cheat, I will steal, I will bite, right? And and they really like, are, are really like, I am not letting me go, okay? And just like a stallion, if you know, it, eventually enough duress, enough pressure, uh, enough humiliation, enough shame, enough guilt, right? Uh, enough abuse, enough shock enough, you know, um, 
discipline, right, in a, in a negative term, with that consistency, right, then eventually we don't ever give up. We just kind of put weight on or we kind of think to ourselves, we'll put it away. We never were like, okay, we never, like to this day, you've never given yourself up, ever. That's why inside of you is the same pain that you were when you were little because you're still fighting. To this day, you're still fighting to be you. Have you noticed? And yes, we can get lost in the years and we can, um, you know, uh, you know, hand it over to a, a relationship for a while or we can get lost in a job or we can spend a bunch of money or we can dive into drugs or alcohol, but it really only, honestly, pressure only brings you back to yourself. So you'll notice that after those experiences that are designed to kill you, you actually start to like learn more about yourself. And it's almost like, well, if I have to give myself away, what's the point? And it's big old circle, right? Quantum fitness. So it's like on our way to destroy ourselves through, you know, checking out, right? Then we end up finding ourselves right where we left off. And, and then we learn the journey of checking in. And it's the same drug because checking in feels like remembering. It feels like truth. It feels like, it feels like the answer. It feels like confirmation. It feels hopeful. It feels, you feel acknowledged. You feel seen, right? And that unfortunately can become also another addiction. And if you guys join us with our second series of quantum fitness addiction age, and disease, you're gonna learn how those all sound very different and they are literally one of the same. Because the way that you ne uh, negotiate, here's a better word, the more you and learn how to negotiate with separation of yourself, the more you fill it with addictions. Now, addictions are not, you know, by definition designed as like, oh, alcohol or drugs. No, addiction is anything that we are using to cope with the loss of self or using to feel what our loss of self is, right? Because there's some drugs that will make you feel like spirit, right? And there's some people that make you feel like love, right? So it isn't necessarily like, it isn't always like an alcohol or drug. It is a feeling it's a coping device, it's a security blanket, right? It's anything we're using to, to, to hide the fact that we have lost ourselves. So analogy would be like, okay, so say I lose a child, God forbid. That would be like me either jumping in and you know um, adopting a whole bunch of kids or you know going and trying to get pregnant really quickly to have another one and having another one or you know like losing myself into someone else's kids and on the other side of that would look like maybe i don't want kids right it's like uh my addiction becomes resistance of i don't want little kids around me you know i lost my inner child i don't want kids around me and you'll notice you'll notice that our generation that we birthed i'm 46 maybe you're younger but the generation that i birthed is not necessarily sold on kids and they are very aware you know, of what they're having to give up. And they are not in the kind of this <clears throat> victim perpetrator. They're like, no, it's just like my daughter, she's 24. She's like, mom, you're gonna have cats and dogs. Those are gonna be your grandkids, accept it. And I'm like, you know what? I'm down for that because I can't honestly say that I had kids because I was ready. You know, I had kids because I needed something to love, right? I needed, I needed to feel that connection. I needed to feel that unconditional love. And I just have one. You know, so I totally get why we all do the things we do, whether it's sex, drug, shopping, moving, you know, staying in abusive relationships, it's all part of the addictive brain. And this brain is constantly trying to balance what it is disconnected from. All right, goes back to balance. Your addiction is your body's attempt to reconnect to feel connection, to have connection. So please, if there's addictions you're dealing with, 
let go of the judgment. That's not going to help you. You know, more of like, wow, this is the way we coped. This is the way that we, um, you know, shut our feelings down. This is the way that we got through. This is the way we thought it was. This is what we thought love was, right? I mean, I really thought since I was two years old, you know, it's so like, um, you know, I was going to have all my hopes and dreams come true. And I, I literally didn't question this until people started saying, I think you're in the wrong family. You know, I don't think you, I don't think you're my kid. Like, who are you? And I'm like, I am me. Right. And, and soon it was like, oh, okay. Well, I can't say that. I can't do that. I can't feel that. I can't think that. Right. And if I'm dealing with a, a brain that is a manifester and I cannot emphasize that enough. Honestly, when it comes down to our root loss and our root grief, we were asked and then told and then pushed into unbecoming. Okay. And whether we did it by, you know, turning ourselves down or or putting some weight on some of our wants and needs or, you know, biting our tongue or channeling it somewhere else, you know, like in like kind of a double life. We eventually like that stallion, um, started to break, but just like the stallion and anybody who really like breeds and breaks horses can, can kind of add their two cents here is, is they're, they're broken but they're not broken, you know? They're broken because they're choosing to break, but not because, I mean, they would rather die than like give up their power. And that's really how we are because guaranteed, you're still fighting. You're still fighting for you. You you have never truly walked away, if you're hearing this. Now, I'm not saying that some people, you know, who are, are you know, not on their journey uh, are, are, are fighting for this but most people are fighting for themselves. Like I want to be authentic. I want to express myself. I want to, I want to be seen and heard for who I am, even though that might be different. And we're, we're seeing, like I said, this culture of kids that is literally not taking your concerns personally about their choices. You know, we're, we're having people come in and say, nope, I'm this gender. And we're having people come in and say, no, nope, I don't really want to work. And I, I think I'm valuable whether I'm working or not. And we're like, oh, you know, and here we are a little bit of that byproduct of our raising, like, well, who do they think they are, right? And, and those are usually our kids designed to trigger us, right? So with that, you know, you are still on this search. So we're not going to necessarily grieve the loss of ourselves. What we're gonna do is we're gonna be grieving more for that loss of connection and, and, and then work to let the energy go out of our body into these little guys, right? But then really what we wanna do is once we find a patch of grief, right? And what is gonna, it's energy in motion is emotion. Okay. Now emotion comes through, right? And, and, and we, we, it's usually connected to a vibrational thought and that thought can be from five senses. Like it can come through smell, like a thought or a thought can come through something we see, something we touch, right? Something that we hear. And really, again, thoughts are meaningless. And then there's an emotion, right? That it has a signature of that is received, the brain then decides what it is. It's like, okay, this thought feeling comes in or uh, this thought emotion comes in, excuse me. And now the brain's like, okay, we're looking at a flower. What does a flower mean to us? And also what do we mean to the flower? Oh, flowers don't like me. Okay. So, and again, it happens so quickly that it creates a meaning associated with the vibration and now you are chemically reacting. Now one thought can have 33 chemical reactions and I am not going to say you need to learn all those. You really don't. You need to learn your basic hardware and your basic software. That's it. I mean, even if you do practitioner training, I mean, it's just not worth it to know every tiny little steroid hormone or sex hormone or this or that you need to, you need to 
like really have a good understanding of your basics and that will get you all the way, okay? So with this idea that we are grieving the loss of our own potential, okay? We are grieving the loss of our time that we have lost to other people and, and places. We are grieving the loss of our creative energy that has been pissed away and, and stolen and used other places and, and not used at all. We are grieving the loss of our ability to still share because I will tell you that one of the things that hurts you and me the most is when you have so much love in your heart and you have so much to give and you're not allowed. You're not allowed to give it. Nobody will see you. Nobody will hear you. Nobody wants it. And if they do, right? It's like, it still doesn't feel received in the way that, you, you know, those expectations. So when we're dealing with grief, it's important that you, that you really are setting the intention of what you're trying to create here. And what you're trying to create here is a reconnection. The whole purpose of quantum fitness, whether we're doing the weight class or we're doing the addiction series or we do the superhuman, you know, build of the DNA, your work is to build a reconnection, right? And although you never really can lose your connection, it can become so like unfamiliar and it can become so quiet that even if a, a little like intuition comes up, you're like, mm, I better I better call Jess or I better call somebody else or you know, last time I did that didn't work out. So again, you've, you've got built in booby traps and security systems so that, you know, you don't um, hurt yourself, right? And you don't do too much and you know, you stay at that five. Hopefully you guys all watched that class because you, you came here as a 10. Now, not a 10 in someone else's eyes, you came as a 10 in your eyes with every capability packed into your biochemistry to be, act, have, say, do everything that your heart could desire. Which means that if there was a desire inside of you, your body was built to do it. Even if it doesn't feel like that, even if it doesn't look like that. If you had a desire, have a desire, it's still part of your body chemistry. It's not coming from outside of you. And this is what we're grieving the most, okay? Where we get into traps, our, you know, our hormonal responses that we believe our intuition. Now I gave you a whole sheet on this, so I'm not gonna dive into it. But what I want you guys to understand is that until you have a fully reconnected brain that is functioning from a state of joy, peace, and the feeling of being satisfied most of your day, please don't, please do not take your feelings as intuition. Your feelings are a byproduct of your programs. And boy, do they feel real. Who you're attracted to, who you're not attracted to, what you want, what you don't want, really have nothing to do with who you were and what you came for. Because honestly, if you would have been online with your, your own you know, hemispheres of your brain at seven years old, there would be nothing you couldn't create right now, which means that everything would be utilized from a place of inspired action because you'd have both your feminine energy and your masculine energy balanced. And most humans just, you know, got one or the other one knocked out of them. So here we are putting ourselves back together, right? And it's the art of remembering, like remembering, putting yourself back together. So this grief program, although you know you might feel and you might have an angry month, you might have a couple days where you're just pissed off and just please remember what it was like to be a child, a toddler, because again, child, you know, you're already, you're already starting to break that stallion, but the toddler is uncontrollable. <laughs> and this is where I want you to be able to be allowed to emotionally unwind. Okay, whether it's through your work that you do here, through your exercise, through your art, through your cleaning, organizing, um, through you know talking, through writing, whatever medium you're you're able to access, 
I want you to get that anger out. I want you to get that channeling out. I want you to get that, that dirt out of your body that you have been holding on to because it's going to help this come back together organically, right? No, like seriously, like will it together. It's like, it's going to come back together on its own when the weight, the buffer, right? The wall comes down between the two, all right? The concept is, and the intention and the purpose, very important, is that we are doing these techniques for the purpose of bringing down the wall that separates the um, the barrier and it, that acts as the barrier between your left and right hemisphere. Now, a lot of scientists will tell you, no, 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 it's here and here, it's here and here, and. If this isn't here, your life is a mess. Absolutely, right? That, duh. But, right? See, this is the you that's like never given up. See, this is you that hasn't conformed. This is the you that it, that still is doing your little manipulative devil life behind so-and-so's back or throwing the tantrum, you know, to do what you want, right? It's like you, this heart, that stays in a space of non-duality, which means that it is just, it's pure you. Like it has not, it's not broken. It has not separated. It has not cracked. When we say our heart is broken, what we mean is my connection is broken. And when the brain, the left and right hemisphere, think of it like a mom and a dad and think about your heart as the child, okay? If the mom and dad are not getting along and they're fighting and they're not working together and the mom's like, I'm a single mom, I gotta do everything. And the dad is like not paying child support. And you know, and the, and the child ends up having to become the parent, right? And a lot of you guys can relate to this. And that child inside of you is, is kind of has to let go of their experience of wonder and adventure and, um, and, and, and excitement and grow up. And you always have this thought like the Peter Pan syndrome, like, well, when I get older, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do this. And, and then depending on which side of your brain you gave up will literally determine the type of identity and reality and personality that you create. It will also be what you're attracted to and what you're addicted to. So again, what, you know, in order to get down to here, where the real you is, Mom and dad have to fall back in love, okay? Literally. I was having this like love affair with my own brain and I, I'm gonna have to like write like a whole book about it one day because you know, I literally had to walk away from my, my masculine, um, you know, manifester uh, at age five. I can remember the day, I can remember the time, I literally walked in a room, witnessed something and walked out and was like, okay. <laughs> like I, I literally in that moment, it wasn't even like something had to break me. It was, it, it was like this moment I realized that if I, if I tried, if I, you know, if I tried to assert myself, if I, if I did anything for me, then, you know, I wasn't gonna make it. So it was this moment where I walked in as, you know, me who is here to have my experience and share because I'm so abundant with like love and joy and all this. And I, I literally walked out going, okay, well, what are my options here? You know, it's like I said in, in class, it's like, you don't get the job you want. And then you're like, okay, what, what, what am I allowed to do? And this is where all your grief is in your, what am I allowed to do? I mean, you wanna know why you're bored and you're miserable and you're sad and your joy is like me and you know, you get more excited about the anticipation of joy or you get more excited about future potential. You get more excited about your fantasies or your meditations or you know, what someone else is gonna be excited about than you are. And this is a byproduct of, of us like having to do that disconnect and then literally like working with the disconnect. It's like how someone loses a leg, they're gonna figure out how to, how to get around, which means that the other side has to overcompensate, okay? So you look at this very male-driven world 
and in this masculine driven world they have lost their feminine empathy they have lost their ability to feel so what they will do is in order to dominate what they will do is they will turn their masculine energy up even more right and this is really like you know men right and this is they turn it up more and because they do not feel connected to their own feminine energy they will either be obsessed with women or they will enslave women okay now vice versa on the other side if i have to turn down my ability to provide for myself protect myself fix build my life build my dreams do what i want to do you know, then what's going to happen to me is I'm going to have to continue to turn that masculine energy down and I'm going to have to continue to turn it up, the feminine up because my body is like, we got to balance here. Okay. Now what happens to your body here? Okay. Because you have to understand that your feminine and masculine energy is associated with testosterone and estrogen. So when I turn my feminine energy up, I am turning my estrogen way up in my body. Okay, that's the byproduct of my thought. It has a physical chemical reaction. And therefore, I may throw myself into puberty faster, right? Getting your period at nine. Okay, I, you might, you know, be more, uh, you, you might develop earlier, right? Um, it depends on how much of your masculine you had to give away. If, you're, if you've been called estrogen dominant by doctors or people, it is because you have had to turn feminine energy way up. Now, you can't really build a body without testosterone because, okay, testosterone is the builder, but estrogen is the grower, okay? I grow, so he builds the farm, I grow all the crops, okay? So I am going to be in this weird, like, um, almost like, abusive relationship with my own testosterone when I become very feminine, okay? So what that will look like is I need the testosterone to build the building blocks so that I can continue to grow and grow and grow. And this is why you'll get you know overweight as a child if you've been abused because you're literally trying to grow protection around you. If you are, um, you know, depend and again, this is what I've noticed is if you have a weight problem as a child, you literally had to turn down your guy because testosterone left normally you'll follow your natural you'll follow a natural blueprint of your body's um you know rhythm which means you'll be a balance which means you shouldn't necessarily be overweight or underweight you'll be where you're balanced and so if we're underweight right or overweight a lot of times in childhood we have to have more testosterone to protect ourselves right so you like can't gain weight okay or you know it's like you're too active like little boys are Again, they're the builders and we're the growers. So, and, and that's why, you know, you always say women, uh, you know, we blow everything out of proportion because we are literally growing an argument. We are growing a scenario. We are growing drama. And then men are more like build, 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 build. And so you see that this is happening here. So depending on where you had to let go, okay, or turn down or put some weight on or shut up or suck it up, right, will be, your childhood health it will be your it, you'll, you'll be seeing what you were allowed to do and then your brain by the time it is seven because it stays in theta you have your brain sheet theta it's malleable malleable what are we what are we we're learning we don't know what we are yet we are we haven't closed the door yet we are downloading we are observing we are acting we are protecting we are experiencing and by the time i'm seven we will decide and at seven, it, it becomes more of a, a hardened, um, uh, your brain is very malleable and then it becomes very hardened. Now it is always malleable, which means it's always changeable, but it, it does become kind of a solid working system so that you can now go out into the world and know who you are. Okay, so first seven years is I know who I am with my family. Second seven years is I know who I am with school and identity. And the third seven year cycle is, is I know who I am in my world, right? And if you take the second series, I will show you why your body was only designed to maximize its aging till 21 and then it was up to you. So your body was designed to go three seven year cycles and then go, okay, now you get to decide if we live forever or if we die tomorrow, right? Because again, the life cycle of a human with the 12 strands of DNA 
can literally live forever because the system rebuilds itself, but it rebuilds itself based on this connection. Okay, this connection. So if this was disconnected very early, there's gonna be struggles. Okay, there's gonna be body issues. There's gonna be family issues. So ultimately, the more disconnection that we uh, were forced to create um, in childhood uh, was then hardened in the brain and became a functioning core belief system, okay? Now, the, the, the interesting thing is if you go back to the first class, I talk about the four levels of consciousness, okay? So we've got the super conscious, the unconscious, the uh, subconscious, and uh, super conscious, unconscious, conscious, right? And then the subconscious, okay? And that's like, if I was gonna say that the screen on the movie, okay? This is your subconscious reality projecting, okay? And your super consciousness is the light stream that is actually showing the film. The projector is your brain and you're sitting in the, po you're sitting in the seat as your conscious mind like, what the hell? <laughs> this isn't my life, right? So again, this idea comes back to where we're going now. You know, it's like, it's interesting because there's really two segments of the brain, but there are actually four major players going on here, okay? Because it male is, and it male is, um, is, is earth, right? And feminine is like the heavens, Okay, so we have this idea of this dual already going on inside of us. And then we've got the manual, masculine energy that is action. Like I act out the feminine desire. Like, and then we've got the heart, right? And it is in those four parts too, but it doesn't reside in judgment. It's like, I am that I am that I am. I'm boy, girl, I'm everything. I am here for the, I'm here to play. I'm, I'm here for love. I'm here to share everything I got and these are the parents. And the way that we were created here to have this kind of virtual reality was exactly that, like self-sustainable, right? Everything can be manifested from this and this, everything. Your Wi-Fi is built in, right? You don't need mom's hotspot, but we are literally like talked, beat away from ourselves. But like I said, you never lose this. But doesn't it seem like you don't live a lot of this out here? And what happens is once you're seven, your brain's like, okay, this is who we are. This is who we are in the world. And this is the world, the way the world sees us. So this is how we see the world. And this is how the world sees us. Got it. Projection, reflection, right? And so good, we got it. And now you start navigating from a conscious place. So it's like the person sitting in the movie theater is like, okay, we're, we finally left home, like great, now we get our freedom. The brain's like, no. Uh, we finally find the person of our dreams, no. Uh, you know, it's like, you you are, are literally like unaware of this disconnection. And the reason why you're unaware of this disconnection is because you've been taught away from your own intuition, okay? So if this is mom and dad, all right, and this is the little child, right? Then right here is is your true intuition that is guiding the whole thing, and 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 this is usually what shuts down a lot, right? In, in childhood and especially in adulthood, it's like the gut, but you know, and this is where all of we're all most of where we're going to be working in grief because your core. Your core work that you're going to be doing with me is going to get this back together. You could, it doesn't make sense. We're not we're not doing brain work here. We're doing core work because it requires both sides of your brain to use your core. That's why some of you are like, I do Pilates and I couldn't do 70 of these. I don't need you to do 70 right now, right? The intention to start where you are and be where you are, good enough. Don't make it another, you know, you know, judgment thing on yourself. So it's like allow your your yourselves to unfold with with how this unfolds. Um, so what we're gonna be doing is everything we do for our grief our grief work is based in no other no other intention is to bring down the wall and bring the harmony back together. So it's like this right here is like marriage counseling. <laughs> and and this is to get this because this child is so tired of the fighting and it's so tired of not having what it wants and it's so tired of not being heard and seen and it's so tired of 
you know, having to use addictions and, and things and food and other people to feel safe and connected. Because again, your Wi-Fi is here. You, you, when your Wi-Fi is on and it's streaming from the left and right hemisphere, right? And your brain is in, and your heart is in sync with that. Like you're manifesting opportunities that always tell you you're safe. You're never even gonna see things that scare you because you see, remember I said, you don't trust your eyes yet. You're gonna see very soon what it feels like to be safe from the inside and know that you're divinely taken care of and not know how you know that. You knew that when you were a baby, hopefully, you're gonna know that again. And that is my gift to you because this is why we came. We did not come for half life, we came for the full daddy and we don't want to be scared to put ourselves out there. We don't want to be, you know, fi going over the files of our last, you know, failed relationship or business transaction that keep us from really like standing in the light. And, and it's not about you being on a stage. It's about you living your childhood bliss, your dreams, your hopes, your, your joy, and, and being able to live in joy because joy is your natural state. Okay. Peace, joy, satisfied, right? Not this, it's not good enough. It's not good enough, not good enough. When we're disconnected, nothing will ever feel good enough. When we're disconnecting, no one will ever feel good enough for long term, not past the three month mark, okay? So this is our opportunity to give our bodies the most amazing gift because they have been doing, it's, you know, life finds a way, right? It's just like the dinosaurs. It's like, if I, you know, if I take away all the, the boys so they can't fertilize the women, the women will become men and they will start to evolve. And that's kind of what has happened is this great split of mankind is this very dominating masculine world we live in that has created their own kind of slavery energy towards women. And then we've created these women that have come here like the Amazon women who've come here with all this feminine energy that have to turn their male down because they were being controlled by men, male energy, and then turn the feminine way up. And this hurts the body the same way that too much masculine does, okay? Because if I'm growing or if I'm building, right, you see there's more male billionaires in the world than women. And the reason why is because that time and freedom is what they are dominating, okay? And space, okay, and abundance is what they get from us. So, and we are not so driven in that way of build, 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 build. We're more like grow, grow. And so we end up either growing for them or growing away from them, right? And it becomes this war. So the war we see out there is the war we're, he we're, we're dealing with here. And the more that scares you, the more you're disconnected and the more lack you are in, the more disconnected you are. So money will return organically from all, everywhere. Um, you know, you, the body will start to heal itself because it was designed. I mean, your arm cut, you get your arm cut, it heals, right? So everything major can heal. Your aging process will slow down. You will not be attracted to craving the addictive cycle that stops your flow. And whatever weight, whether it's weight or weight, will literally start to disappear with this practice, okay? So we're gonna get ready to begin. And again, I want you to intuitively, please don't look for perfectionism here. Look for the concept because every time I do this, it's different. And every time I've done this on someone, it's different because again, the moment is different and what my thought is, is different. So I want to take three different kind of, um, two, three different techniques and three different scenarios so that you can kind of either make your own or you can do these until, you know, that intuition starts to come back and you're like, oh yeah, this is reminding me of that. So this is really more of an inspiration technique and it's, it's less about how, doing it perfect. It's about the intention we set before and it's about showing up and it's about balancing and it's about having a true desire to, to manifest our reality from the inside. 